Okay, we're now at uh, 3,000 metres in the Swiss Alps uh, again, and we're in the ablation zone of the glacier. Now, the ablation zone is that part which over the course of a, a year experiences a net uh, loss in mass. Now, what we're going to do here is install some ablation stakes. These are, are long poles. This is just a small section of one. Uh, by drilling a hole into the ice, putting the ablation stake in, measuring the vertical distance from the ice surface to the top of the pole, and what we then do is come back at regular intervals and measure how that distance has increased because as the glacier melts, the surface will obviously melt down so we can get an idea of how much ablation is taking place. Of course, measuring ablation <coughs> and of course accumulation higher up in the accumulation zone with lots of snow is the basis for mass balance measurements, which is the technique we use to assess whether a glacier is growing or shrinking, irrespective of what the front may be doing. Now, a couple of safety points. You should never walk on any glacier unless you know what you're doing or you're supervised, particularly if there is snow on the surface. And we have snow on the surface here. I've had to dig away about half a meter of snow to get to glacial ice underneath. And to get safely on the glacier, we've used this, uh, an avalanche probe to feel through uh, for the presence of any hidden crevasses. Now, uh, we know this area is safe, but we're just demonstrating good practice. Obviously, we've only come onto the glacier a few yards. Now, but if you're really venturing onto glaciers uh, above the snow line, you must be roped up, you must be trained in crevasse rescue uh, and be with somebody else who also knows what they're doing. So, we're going to drill a hole then, uh, we're only going to go down to a metre uh, with our uh, ice auger here. Yeah. So Chia is now going to demonstrate, he's got a, uh, I'll just hold up the tip so you can see, sorry before we get going, he's got a, uh, two very sharp uh, blades on the tip and the rest of it is just a giant corkscrew which feeds uh, ice up from the hole to stop it blocking, it removes the ice as we drill. This takes quite a while, so we'll just film it starting off and we'll see how we get on. Okay, we've now drilled a hole. We actually drilled three holes. One of the problems with this uh, ice auger, and indeed any drilling into ice, if you get a rock halfway down. Uh, you've had it basically. Uh, you haven't got much choice but to pull the drill up and start again somewhere else. Now if we were steam drilling using hot water or steam, different matter, we could maybe blast our way past it. So, we have however persevered. Our third hole hit a rock as well. So we're obviously in quite a, an area where uh, there's a lot of debris uh, beneath the surface layers of ice. Uh, but if we were doing this for real, we would drill down maybe four meters, we would install, uh, a stake slightly longer than that. Uh, but what we do, we'll, we'll assume this is a four meter stake, we put it in our hole that we drilled, and then we measure the distance from the ice surface to the top of the ablation stake. Make a note of that in the field book, and we will then come back at regular intervals, and as the glacier surface down wastes, we can calculate uh, how much melt uh, has taken place over time. If we were doing a full mass balance measurement, we'd have numerous ablation stakes across the glacier and we'd also dig snow pits in the accumulation zone. So we've got an idea of how much accumulation is taking place and with the stakes we've got an idea of how much ablation is taking place. We can average that out over the surface of the glacier and then if we do that over a couple of years we can assess whether the net mass balance is changing. Plenty of useful student projects that can be done just by looking at ablation, how it varies across the surface of the glacier. So if you have access to this sort of equipment, there's plenty of uh, good projects you can do. Uh, these ice augers, not particularly expensive, but many geography departments uh, will have this sort of basic kit. Uh, ranging poles, ablation stakes, uh, cheap, and obviously the only other equipment uh, is the tape measure. So nice and simple, provided you don't hit a rock. Um, we would leave that in now. Uh, and come back a few days later to measure the change in height and uh, obviously as I say do that at regular intervals over a reasonably long period of time.